I don't know about you, but I don't have any time to waste. It is time for us to never again wonder if we wasted our time in a session and if we made any impact at all. Today, we're going to talk about how to make sure the five ways you can make sure that you are having an effective and fun, engaging session with your students. Now, as you know, this is a series we've been conducting. We talked a little bit about how to um, prepare for your session. And now we're going to talk about how to already how to deliver your session. If you didn't catch that first video, my name is Kavalyn Day and I'm the founder of the School Social Worker and Mental Health Provider Facebook community. And I'd love for you to join us there. So I'll include a link in this video um, for you to join us at that time. But today what we're gonna talk about is how you can make sure that your sessions are effective um, by also making sure that they're engaging for the students that you're, that you're participating with. So I'm gonna give you five ways to make sure that your sessions are engaging. So first thing I want you to do is get your students hooked when they come in to your session. Now, I like to do this one of a couple ways. I like to either have like an introductory, like kind of question or probe or prompt, um, or I wanna make sure that I'm uh, connecting to something that we maybe have personally in, in common. So um, I have some phrases that I typically use with students to kind of help get them in the mood for a counseling session, um, to kind of get them hooked on our interaction. It can also kind of help to unhook them from whatever might be the conflict that they're coming in with or the problem that they're coming in. So for example, um, if they're coming in with a problem, I always kind of say like, help me understand why this is important right now. Help me understand why this is so frustrating for you right now. Help me understand why today was the last straw, right? So help me understand is a really good way to elicit some conversation. That's a great way to get them hooked into your session. Um, another way to do it is um, if they are, maybe you are doing a counseling session and they have something they're really excited about or something they really want to talk about, um, a good way to kind of segue into the session is like, you know what, this is so important. I would love to hear more about this, but I know we promised mom that we were going to talk about this thing first. Can we table this over here and talk about that as soon as we get done? that kind of gets them hooked into your session. Another way to do it is to make sure that you've got really great rapport. And this is part of that preparation too. Um, greeting your students by name on a regular basis and making sure that you're seen and observable really helps to connect them. Um, but whenever possible, when you come into a session is you want to start by trying to get to know them personally. What are their personal interests? Um, questions like, you know, this or that, either or, uh, would you rather? Those kind of things really can be helpful. I used to keep a... Um, Jenga blocks that I had written questions on, on my desk. So if they weren't really feeling like talking um, or didn't feel like they had anything to say or weren't really engaged, I could say, hey, how about we play Jenga for a little bit? There's questions and you get to pick which one you wanna answer. Um, as a rule of thumb, I think you can buy the Jenga blocks with the, the questions written on it. I always wrote my own, um, but I think you can buy them with the questions on there now. But if you have like different questions on the different sides, it gives them a little bit more control about which questions they're gonna choose to ask. Um, that will give you some insight as well, because if they're choosing not to answer a certain question, um, that might be something you wanna uh, explore in detail a little bit later. Um, I always want to make sure that I am present as often as possible in like lunch rooms and break rooms so that kids get to see me, um, so they get to know my face. That's another way to kind of help them get hooked. Sometimes they're going to get hooked to you as the person because they have that connection with you. Sometimes they're going to get hooked to the object or the thing that you're working on. Sometimes they're going to get hooked onto the subject. So whatever you need to use. So if one doesn't work, flip to the other one because you want to make sure that they're hooked on that time that you have together. Um, that way we'll they'll initially be engaged. Now, this one is for you. You want to get curious. You want to have an open mind about whatever problem or topic that you're presenting. Um, be curious about what they're thinking about it, what they're feeling about it, what they're saying, what they're not saying. Keep that curious, open mind. When a person is actually engaged with you, you're more likely to want to disclose to them. Um, most counselors are really good at this naturally, but I think sometimes we're in the school setting where we're so forced for time and so crunched to get them back to class. We've stopped you know, kind of utilizing that curiosity that really does invite conversation. So make sure that you are being really, really curious. 
Um, I, this is kind of a motivational interviewing technique. So number three is choose co-choose your goal. So you want the two of you to decide what you're working on, why this is important. Um, so we, you know, we've maybe it's, hey, we've got to talk for 30 minutes a week. What, what would you really want to accomplish with this 30 minutes? What would be helpful for you? What would you like to get out of this 30 minutes? I'm sorry, I can't let you go back to weight training right now. But if we can accomplish our goal, then I can send you back to and, and you can get back to the things that you want to do. How can we do that together? So help them choose the goal, but be open to listening with, to what they have to say. And then you want to make sure that what you've done in the session is memorable. So um, whatever the intervention you're going to use, and we talked about that in the planning video, that you might use a worksheet, you might use a visual aid, you want to make sure that it's memorable for them. So when you are making that connection, is you want to make sure that they are also picking up on that connection. So kind of draw a circle around it or highlight it. So let's say that we are talking about coping strategies and we want to kind of make sure that this is memorable for, memorable for them. We might ask them to rank the way that they are feeling in terms of that emotional distress on a scale of one to 10 when they sit down, right? Um, what would you like to be? That's helping them to choose the goal. Well, I'd like to be a three, you know, like I, I'd like to be a zero. Okay, I'm, uh, if we couldn't get to a zero today, you know, maybe they're at an eight. You say, hey, I don't know that we can get to a zero today what would be okay if we could get to that for you today? Okay, well, maybe like a five. Okay, great. So we want to go from an eight to a five. All right, does that sound good? Yes, okay. So I'm going to show you a couple different techniques and then I want you to you know, decide which one you, could, you want to use or um, you know, decide which one looks cute, you know, looks interesting for you today. Um, they, maybe they try a deep breathing technique. Maybe you take them through a very brief meditation or maybe you have them you know, do some mindful movements or something like that. And then you loop it back to their goal. That's how you make it memorable. So, okay, we talked about this. You said that you wanted to make, you wanted to move from an eight to a five. And so we gave you three different strategies and you tried all three of them. You did a great job. Are we, are we back at that, at that five where you want it to be? Give them a moment to kind of reflect. Okay. Yeah, I think I am. I think I am at a five. Oh my gosh. That's great. That is so exciting. Really drive home what they've done in the session, right? Give them that hope, that, that inspiration, that goal. And then last but certainly not least, number five, is you want to check for that knowledge. So, and this can also help you in terms of your documentation, right? So what are they saying to you has been memorable for them? What are they saying to you? Like, hey, this is this is something I'm going to take with me. This is what I want to try next time. Um, what did you know? What did you learn today? You know, was you know we spent about 20 minutes together. What have you got out of this time together? What have you learned today? What are you? If you were going to tell mom or dad about what we did today, what would you tell them? That kind of thing is checking for the knowledge, checking for what has been memorable for them, and also maybe checking for what you might want to work on or use in the future as well. So your goals for having an effective and memorable session that meets the needs of your students within the time that you have is number one, spend a little bit of time at the beginning of your session, getting them hooked. Um, depending upon how much time you have, I would say maybe you know, five or 10% of the time that you have getting them hooked. Some kids were going to definitely need longer because they're, they're less, less hooky to be able to get hooked into the session. Um, then you want to maintain that curiosity about what you're seeing, what you're doing, what they're saying, what they're experiencing. Be really curious. Co-choose that goal. So work together to choose the goal. Number four, make sure it's memorable. So once you've accomplished something, once you've shared an intervention, that worksheet, that visual aid, make sure you hook it back to the goal that they set so that they feel good about it. And then last but not least, make sure that you are checking for their knowledge acquisition, asking them what has been good for them, what they're taking from this session, and then also document that as much as you can. So those are our five tips for having an effective session with your students. Can you do me a favor and tell me in the comments below, have you joined my group yet? The School Social Worker and Mental Health Facebook community um, is ready for your 
joining if you have not joined over there. It is completely free. It is growing every day. Um, I have host tons of free trainings in there. Um, I share resources when I find them in there. Um, and you also have access to not only my brain looking at your situations when you want to post a problem, but the brains of over 3,500 other people as well. So if you have joined, drop a comment and tell me that you're in below. And if not, click the link and go ahead and join. See you next time.